In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 4090 Gaming OC 24 gig video card. I'm going to show you from beginning to end, from removing your old video card, drivers included, to installing your brand new video card. I'm also going to show you how to install the RS Engine and RGB Fusion, and then change the RGB lighting in the system as well on the video card, and then going through all of the RGB lighting as well. Being that this is a brand new video card, there were a few issues in this video that I've actually sent to Gigabyte as well so that they can resolve and some that I need to resolve on my own as well. But before we get into the install, let's jump into the unboxing real quick. And don't worry, in case you don't want to watch the unboxing, along the bottom here there is a timeline so you can skip ahead, but you're not going to want to miss it. Let's go. All right, here she is again, the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 4090. This specific one is the GVN4090 Gaming OC 24GD with their WinForce technology, OC edition, and their four-year warranty. All right, nothing along this side. Along the back here, we can see some of their WinForce cooling system technology, their RGB fusion to control the RGB lighting, then their screen cooling, and their protection metal backplate, and then some more tech specs and everything. Gigabyte recommends at least a 1000 watt power supply for this. NVIDIA states the minimum system requirement for this is 850 watts and three PCIe 8 pin cables. Now it comes with the adapter in the box or should at least that will adapt four PCIe cables into the video card. I recommend you have all four. The fourth is for overclocking. Now while NVIDIA recommends at least an 850, 850 being the entire system, not just for the video card, Gigabyte recommends something a little bit higher just in case to cover everything. So I'd probably go for the higher recommendation out of the two. Then along the side over here, we have serial number UPC. And then the part that kind of scares me coming from Newegg, nothing is sealed. There isn't tape. Now there isn't tearing either, so it should be good. So just go ahead, open this up. <clears throat> so black box, you can see with Gigabyte on it. Nothing else other than a black box. All right. And coming in through the top, they have what looks to be like a Gigabyte CD. Okay, not a CD. So just the case over here. And then their warranty card. And then that's for registration. Then a gigabyte, two documents here, graphics card, quick guide to show you how to install it. I'll go over that in this video so you don't have to worry about that. Then another installation guide of the anti-sag bracket, which this does include one. Very nice. We'll go over that in this video as well. Then foam, so exciting. I'm gonna save this for last. Here is the adapter cable it is braided and then four pcie eight pins it's a nice cable and then this is covered over here over here is where the controller will be that will let you know that hey there's only three connected don't overclock or there's four connected you can overclock if you'd like and this is the 12 pin cable again this will go from four eight pins or three into the 12 pin cable that will go connected to the video card and then, wow, it's pretty actually beefy. Then it includes a bunch of these guys over here. And then these are going to be for installing the sag bracket, a bunch of washers, screws, looks like kind of thumb screws, and then regular screws and then these standoff screws. Four of these standoff screws. Five of these regular flathead screws. One of these thumb screws. And then eight of these little washers. Then it includes one of these to hold the card up, the anti-sag bracket which will sit inside of this and here you can adjust it. 
Gigabyte branded. And making sure nothing else here. This is a very heavy card. I'll go ahead and move this out of the way. All right, and now, tremendous. I know you've heard it before, but until you have it in your own hands, it looks kind of cheap, but whatever. Until you have it in your own hands, it, it just... It's just crazy. It is incredibly heavy. Actually, let's just see weighing it real quick. And I let go. Four pounds. That's insane. That goes inside of your computer. But anyway. Okay, so very important to remove all of this plastic. If you leave it on there, it could build up some more heat. And you definitely don't want to build up heat in this card, or in any card, really. And usually they have some here. And all right, so let's just go around real quick just to make sure there's no more. Okay, no more. Now, one very important thing, before you install the video card, make sure to take this off. I've actually had a lot of people try to install it with that plugged in. And if you've never installed the video card, it's definitely easy to confuse. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back and remove it when we go to install the card. I don't want to touch any of these gold fingers, but you can see already, that was just the PCIe. Look how much longer the video card is. From end to end, the card is 13 and a half inches. Now the outer fans are 105.2 millimeters, and the inner fans are 105.99 millimeters. And the card is 73 point or 72.79 millimeters thick. And then from here, hundred and thirty three point ninety one millimeters wide so it is a beefy card along the back here you may not be able to tell but with the light coming off of it we need to remove this piece as well they want to make sure that everything comes to you perfect without any scratches or fingerprints and this is a very nice cold metal back plate Gigabyte over here, GeForce RTX, and I love the way they do this design. Mind you, they're not the first, but they're definitely not the last that they have a fan here, blowing hot air out of here, which out of here, typically you're going to have fans on the roof or the ceiling of your case, sucking that hot air out. And if not, then you're going to have the fan in the back of your case, sucking hot air out. So this definitely does help to remove heat from the video card itself or the GPU. Then along here, we can see there's a bias, OC and silent. So little switch right over here, really tiny. It's set to OC, but you can set it to silent, which will go ahead and lower the clock speeds to keep it nice and cool. Here is the 12 pin PCIe cable. Like I showed you before, you plug in the four eight pins into the 12 pin, the 12 pin goes into here and we can see all of these fan blades. And then right over here, the copper tubing. Look at that. You can see it through the fan, fan blades over here and then down here as well. And then these are just some of the cables coming from the PCB to the fans themselves. 
along the rear of the card. This is where that anti-sag bracket is going to go, screwed into. Something like that, but we'll get into that in a second. And just looking for any more pieces of film we need to remove. Let's see that the then, card would only take two PCIe slots, though it should take three back here, but they just don't want to make it look bad. But yeah, it, it will take up three, if not 3.5 slots. Then we can see right along here, It has three DisplayPort 1.4 ports and one HDMI 2.1 port. And then coming around over here, we can see the back of the card again. Aside from over here, it looks like they have some slits right over here and then their design, which looks really nice, but you're not going to be looking inside of your system very much. And then we can see the front or the bottom, whatever you wanna call this piece of the card as well. Then coming over here, looks like they have a little curved edge right over here. It looks like little pipes, or if anything, like a keychain along the side over here as well. And then, so you don't cut yourself or you don't poke yourself, they have the edges cut out over here. Not over here, but it is rounded off. But anyway, let's get to installing this real quick. I'm going to be installing the 4090 inside of this system. I'll have system specs down below in case you're interested. And I'm going to show you on here how to uninstall both an Nvidia card and an AMD card. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to prepare the system. So over here, we open up a new tab and we'll go to nvidia.com. Then we'll go to drivers. Down here, we'll go to GeForce. We'll select RTX. 40 series and then geforce rtx 4090 and then whatever version of windows you're using i'm using 11 so i select that and i click search gives me the latest version and i click download now i just go ahead and click download now while that's downloading i just open up a new tab and i go to wagnardsoft.com then i come down here to ddu display driver uninstaller i click on here scroll down a little bit Click here for download and support. Scroll down a little bit more and then official download here. Okay, so the drivers have finished downloading. I'm gonna go ahead and open DDU and now I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the root of the C drive in a folder called DDU and click extract. Then since we're done downloading DDU and the drivers, we'll go ahead, hold the left shift key We'll right click on the start button, then we'll hover over shut down or sign out, and then we'll click restart while still holding on to the left shift key. Okay, now you can let go of the left shift key. So then here we'll click troubleshoot, advanced options, startup settings, and restart to change windows options such as, we're gonna go ahead and go into enable safe mode. So we'll click restart here. And then at this screen, we'll hit number four to enter safe mode. Okay, then we'll click over here to close this. Then we'll open up File Explorer. We'll go to the C drive and we'll go to the DDU folder. And then we'll run Display Driver Uninstaller. We'll click OK here. Now this part is very important. If you have an AMD CPU, uncheck all of these. Now, if you have an Intel CPU, you can go ahead and check all of these. It's okay to go ahead and leave this check as well. And since we're uninstalling NVIDIA, place a check in here. Then we'll scroll down. This one's also very important. Now it's enabled here, but it won't be when you install this. So place a check here. Prevent downloads of the drivers from Windows Update when Windows search for a driver for a device. Now that's very important. That way, when you restart, there'll be no drivers and Windows Update won't install a new driver for you. And we'll click close here. Then here, we'll select device type, GPU. And then if you have NVIDIA, we'll just go ahead and click clean and shut down. And if you have AMD, you'll select AMD and then clean and shut down. And then if you have Intel, you'll select Intel and then clean and shut down. 
Now, a lot of people are gonna fight me on this. I don't care what you do here. This is my recommendation for performance and less issues. If you don't care about performance and you love blue screens and issues, don't do this. So the reason I do this is because first off, in regular Windows mode, Windows is holding onto those drivers, is using those drivers. So the uninstaller from AMD, Nvidia, and Intel can have many issues and not properly remove drivers. What happens then is when you go to install the AMD, Nvidia or Intel drivers, sometimes there's going to be drivers there left over. Even if you choose custom clean install, many times they can't remove that. So then when you go to install newer drivers, those drivers are there and they may not be overridable and then you have issues. It's happened many times in the past with older drivers, both on AMD and Nvidia and even Intel too. So again, if you don't wanna do it, don't, I don't care. Now, the second part on this is whether you're using AMD or Intel for on-die graphics, meaning right now you don't have a graphics card. You're using your graphics from the CPU. They're still graphics. You're still going to want to do this. Now, again, the same way we did on AMD before, if we have an AMD processor, we unselect everything AMD, and then we select AMD on the dropdown, and then clean and shut down. I do the shutdown that way after you're done removing all the drivers, the computer shuts down and then you can install your brand new graphics card. That way it doesn't go back into Windows. Or if you have Intel, like AMD, those are still graphics. You uninstall that, that way they don't fight with the AMD or Nvidia drivers. But anyway, let's keep going. Okay, and again, because we're using Nvidia, I'll select Nvidia and then I'll select clean and shutdown for installing a new graphics card. And this will only take a few seconds, at most a minute. So before we touch any components inside of the PC, we're going to go ahead and touch the inside of the case, get rid of all the ESD in your hands, in your body, that way you don't zap any of the components. It's also good practice to have the power supply connected and the power supply in the off position, the switch flicked off, that way it doesn't turn on while you're doing stuff on here, which it can happen. Now, before we remove any sort of anti-sag bracket or screws over here, we're going to want to disconnect the PCIe cables. Now they're going to be in different places for different video cards and especially the clips. If you notice there's clips down here, that's what holds the video card in or the graphics card in. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and push this pin in and then pull this out. And then we've just gone ahead and disconnected the PCIe cable, at least one of the three. Then to show you a different angle, again, that little pin here, and we'll see it right here on the disconnected card, this pin right over here. We'll just grab that here, disconnect that. And then this one as well. Now we'll go ahead and remove the anti-sag bracket. And then while still holding on to the video card, we'll go ahead and unscrew over here. It's okay if it falls out. Now, mind you, I'm doing this standing up because it's a lot easier for me to demonstrate to you how to do this than the system laying down. Laying down will be the easiest for you to do at home. Okay, now with those removed, You'll notice right over here at the base of the PCIe slot, there is this little locking mechanism. This is locked right now, holding the card in place. Just zooming out so you get a better picture of where that is along the video card. This is the PCIe slot, this is the end of it. Now to unlock that, you want your hand on the graphics card so that it doesn't fall down. And then on this little piece, we're going to push that in while we're pulling the video card out with our other hand. So now it's unlocked and then we can just pull the video card out. Okay, and then we can remove the video card. Now for an AMD card, much like the Nvidia card, the first thing we're going to want to do is remove the PCIe cable. Now, if you remember on the Nvidia card, the clip was on the bottom. On this particular AMD card, the clip is on the top. That will switch from vendor to vendor, but so like we did before, just push this little pin down and pull the PCIe power connection out. 
Now we can go ahead and remove the anti-sag bracket. And then holding the graphics card in place, we'll go ahead and undo the screws over here. And then the same as we did previously on the NVIDIA card, the little clip back over here. For reference, back here at the end of the PCIe slot, with our hand underneath the card so that it won't fall, we'll go ahead and push this locking mechanism in. And then we'll go ahead and pull the card out. Comes out relatively easily. Now, the Gigabyte card only took up two slots back here in the rear I.O. Like all graphics cards though, there is a little piece at the bottom. You can see right back here and right back here, two little darker slits. And that's where these two will go in between the case and the motherboard. So if you remember before we pulled out the video card and we unlocked this, because we're sliding in another video card, we need to make sure this is still unlocked. So if it was locked before, let's say you're installing a brand new video card, just go ahead and unlock it. Now all PCIe locking mechanisms are not going to be the same. And that goes the same for when you're removing the card. Some will have a little clip, a little button that you press at the top. Some will have a latch that you can only reach from the very bottom or the rear of the card if there's nothing blocking. Those are a little bit more difficult. These are probably one of the easiest. All right, so if you remember, there was a little piece of rubber over here. We'll go ahead and take that out. And now we'll go ahead and slide the card in, making sure the PCIe slot lines up right over here. And you'll notice that locking mechanism. Now when we push the card in, that locking mechanism is going to right in place. You'll hear it. I'm gonna push it in now. Okay, and you saw it raise up. And then now we're going to go ahead and screw these in over here. And then when it aligns perfectly, Now, I wanted to install the anti-sag bracket and it would have screwed in right here, but there's actually something there that on the back of the case, there's something there too. So there's nothing in between that, but it's still causing me an issue. I can't get it out of there. I'm going to have to drill it out. I'll do that at another point, but for now I'll have to use my own anti-sag bracket for that. Now this particular power supply, the EVGA P5000 1000 watt has four PCIe cables that come directly from the power supply. A few of them have this eight pin that comes out to another eight pin. Don't use the second, use the direct one. So we'll go ahead and just push them in again with that little locking mechanism. Slide that in and we'll go ahead and do that to all four of them. Okay, now the other thing that we need to worry about, now we just need to plug the 12 pin into this slot right here. Now realize there is on one side, that little clip. And then over here, there's that little piece sticking out. That little piece is going to be right up here. So we'll just go ahead and push that. Now be very careful when you push this in, these are very fragile. Just push that in. And we should hear a little teeny tiny click. Now, one thing we need to be very careful of is when we close this in, that this isn't hitting the glass and we have to be very careful right over here. So not only does it need a lot of room lengthwise, which you see here, there's plenty of room, but it also needs room width wise over here and actually height wise as well. So we'll just, Pull this down a little tiny bit. We might need to play with it a little bit. Let me see if this is good. 
And actually, while I'm here, we're going to be installing the anti-sag bracket. Now we have to be very careful that we don't hit a fan down here. See, there's a blade right here and it comes very close to the edge right over here. So I'm gonna have the anti-sag mechanism hit right here. I'll have links to this down below as well. And now I'll go ahead and put a level right over here so that I can make sure that it is perfectly, well, it is at the perfect height. So I just unscrew it and raise some more. Here just to make sure so it's not perfect but it looks like to be the best we're going to get I may play with that a little bit later on I'm gonna go ahead and put the side panel on real quick so it does hit the glass a little tiny bit but we're just gonna have to push it it's not the prettiest but it works now in the back, when you're connecting your cables if you came from on that video make sure you don't connect your HDMI or DP cable back here anymore. You're going to want to connect it right back here into the video card. HDMI or DP, whichever you use, you want it on the video card now, not the motherboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the computer and we're gonna be recording the screen with the camera. This is the first time we turn it on as well. So I'm assuming it's not going to work with the, oh look at, okay. So it works without the capture card. With the capture card, it does not work. All right, so logging into the machine for the first time, if we go to right click on the start button, then go to device manager. We can open up display adapters and we see Microsoft Basic Display Adapter. That's because we haven't installed the drivers yet. So we'll just close this out, go into File Manager, go to Downloads, and then here we can see the latest driver. So I'll just double click on it. Okay. Okay, agree and continue. Custom, even though we DDU'd the drivers, next perform a clean install and next you're going to see the screen flicker a few times as the drivers take hold and close and we'll close out of here so now we have the drivers installed we can Right click on the start button, go to device manager, and we can see the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090. And then if we right click on the background and then we click show more options and NVIDIA control panel, read through all this and then agree and continue. Opening this up, we'll go over here to adjust image settings with preview. And I like to click use preference emphasizing quality. And then I just drag, drag that down to performance, click apply. Okay, and ECC state. Interesting, ECC is error correcting code. So they allow you to enable ECC. This is going to be very interesting. I'm going to be testing with that. That's very interesting. ECC error correction code is typically left for the Quadro cards, the workstation cards. So I'm incredibly surprised to see it here. Maybe it's not supposed to have it. Maybe because it's the first run, it has it. It's supposed to be a Titan or Titan class. But anyway, let's continue. I'm gonna be looking into that a little bit more. Okay, and then come over here, change resolution. Okay, under change resolution, that is where we have our refresh rate. Now this monitor will only go up to 120, but if your monitor goes higher, you want to select that. So I'll select 120 and I'll click apply. And then click yes. If not, you're going to be at the default 60 Hertz and it'll work, but you'll be stuck at 60 Hertz. Okay, coming down over here and then set up G-Sync. G-Sync 
typically is disabled by default, but because it I, ha I have FreeSync enabled within the monitor, it's enabled here. But if you come under G-Sync and you see it disabled, you want to enable that over here. And then enable that here. And click apply. Okay, and then view HDCP and that's about it on that. Now we'll go to Gigabyte and then we'll go to Products, Graphics Cards, NVIDIA Series. Then we'll click on the card over here. And then we'll go to Support. Okay, so we already have the driver. We don't care about that. It's always best to get it directly from NVIDIA since NVIDIA makes the GPU and then we'll come under here so i was able to find rgb fusion i had to go around a bunch of different places in order to find it as you saw i couldn't find anything on gigabyte site all we found was the driver so i'll go ahead and put links down below where you can get the rs engine and rgb fusion just know anything you see from rs engine that we just installed if it says flash the bios do not do it it's not meant for this version of the video card until you find it on the support site don't use it just as a fair warning all right, so after a fresh restart, after installing the drivers, Aorus Engine and RGB Fusion, first off, we open up Aorus Engine. Okay, you see how that activates the RGB lighting. And then we open up RGB Fusion. Now I'm using the NVIDIA drivers to screen record. Okay, so we have static lighting. You see how this is one static color. And even though these are flashing, it is considered static okay so then we can switch it over to pulse and you'll see the lights fade away and then fade back in including this we'll go to flash you go ahead and turn off those lights real quick okay so you can see the lights a little bit better there and double flash. That one seems not to do anything. Let's try color cycle. Okay, you see how this is changing colors and then this is also changing colors. Actually, the fans look to stay orange. Just crashed on me so again this is not meant for the card i'm gonna go ahead and put links down below but it's not meant for this specific card and then color shift so results may vary for now at least gradient wave dazzle Now intelligence, that goes ahead and changes the lighting depending on the temperature. You can see we're in the 40s and then if you're boring, just go ahead and turn everything off. Just kidding, you're not boring. But I prefer the lighting, so I probably do uh, And then of course we can have profiles, but I will do a color cycle. I kind of like that. But that's just me and it kind of matches the entire system. So in this video, I've shown you from start to finish how to install a brand new video card. In this case, the Gigabyte RTX 4090 Gaming OC card. We've also walked through an unboxing so I can show you everything that comes inside of the box. Then I've shown you how to remove your old video card, drivers as well, and then install the new card, drivers as well, and then showed you a little bit on how to play around with RGB Fusion. Now, as I mentioned earlier, 
RGB Fusion is not included. As for right now, as you saw on the website, neither is the Aorus engine. Aorus engine has the potential to flash the BIOS. Don't do it until an official version comes out on Gigabyte support site for that video card. I've already gone ahead and put in a support case so that they can put it out there for those of you like myself that already have the card. So stick around to This Bites For You. I'm going to be doing a whole lot more on this video card. Iggy with This Bites For You out. See you guys.